Today, rotary drilling takes us to some interesting places, like in 8,000 feet or 2,500 meters of water in the Gulf of Mexico. And it won't be long until we're drilling in even deeper waters. To get out here, we had to start here. Drilling holes on land with rotary rigs. Today's equipment evolved from rigs like this. But whether we work offshore or on land, to successfully drill, the rig needs basic pieces of equipment, including the crown block. And on most of today's rigs, a top drive assembly. It includes the traveling block and an integrated swivel, motor, and other equipment to rotate the pipe and bit. A rig also needs a rotary table for the crew to set the slips and suspend the drill string. In this program, we'll look at this vital equipment and learn how to maintain it. Let's begin with the blocks. This equipment includes the crown block and the traveling block, which is an integral part of the top drive on this rig. By operating the draw works controls, the driller controls the drilling line to raise and lower the traveling block integrated into the top drive. Raising the assembly pulls tools from the hole. Lowering it puts tools in the hole. Here's a typical crown block assembly. It has several pulleys, which in oil patch lingo we call shivs. This crown block has a fast line shiv, several main shivs, and a deadline shiv. The shivs rotate on heavy duty bearings. Crew members thread, reeve is the technical term, the drilling line from the draw works drum up over the fast line shiv, over the main crown block shivs, and down through the traveling block shivs several times, over the deadline shiv, and down to the deadline anchor. During hoisting, the fast line shiv rotates the fastest when drilling line goes over them. The deadline shiv does not rotate at all. Let's look at the daily inspection and maintenance of the crown block. Daily maintenance consists of greasing it. Inspection consists of carefully looking at the assembly for obvious problems. As always, the first step is a pre-job meeting. Personnel plan the job, discuss the risks involved, and go over the tools and equipment needed. And because a crew member will be working in the derrick, they review procedures to prevent falls and objects from being dropped. What's more, before any work on the crown begins, they lock out the draw works power switch. Then the driller shuts down the draw works power control and tags it out. Finally, he sets and locks the draw works brake so that the drum cannot turn. With the draw works locked and tagged out, the crew member assigned to the job of greasing the crown checks out his derrick climbing device. He then properly dons the device. With the climbing device on, he latches onto the climbing cable. Finally, he ascends to the crown. Up the crown on this rig, a grease gun is stored and ready to use. 
To grease the crown block bearings, the crew member applies the grease gun to the grease fitting and pumps the handle. As the grease is pumped, he makes sure it flows into the fitting. If a lot of grease oozes out of the fitting, then little or none is going to where it should. Clean the fitting and try again. In the worst case, replace the fitting. Also, he thoroughly inspects the crown block. He checks for signs of damage or wear. He reports anything unusual to the driller. The crown block assembly also requires monthly and yearly maintenance and inspection, which is usually done by the rig mechanic. So we won't go into detail. Remember, though, that daily maintenance is your job, and it's important to do it. After greasing the crown, the crew member descends to the rig floor. Finally, he lets the driller know he's completed the job. I guess we're ready to start going back in the hole. Right. Now is also a good time to grease and inspect the traveling block, top drive assembly, and the associated equipment. The traveling block associated with this top drive has several shivs. They are enclosed in a housing that has openings in the top through which the drilling line is reeved onto the shivs. At the bottom of the block is a clevis. A large and rugged hook is suspended from the clevis. The top drive is suspended from the hook. The drill stem is made up on the top drive, so the hook and block suspend it. The driller raises and lowers the traveling block and top drive from the control cabin. By manipulating controls, he reels in drilling line on the draw works to raise them. And by releasing the brakes, he lowers the blocks. Because the drill stem is attached to the top drive below the traveling block, the driller raises or lowers the drill stem. Since the traveling block, hook, and swivel is integrated into the top drive, crew members can perform daily maintenance on all the traveling components at the same time. Just as with the crown, before working on the top drive and traveling assembly, crew members hold a pre-job meeting to go over the task. A crew member makes sure the drawworks power switch is still locked out from the work on the crown and the driller checks that his drawworks power control is off and tagged out. What's more, he shuts down all power to the top drive. Finally, he makes sure that the brake is locked down. Because a person is going to be hoisted and suspended by a hoist line at the traveling block, the crew takes some special steps to ensure safety. For one thing, they inspect the man rider hoist and hoist line. The hoist and hoist line must be in perfect order. A life depends on it. Then they put on a special lightweight vest. The vest immediately identifies them as those doing the work. One person operates the man riding hoist. Another rides the hoist line to the top drive and traveling block to grease them. A third man stands on the rig floor in plain sight of both the person on the hoist and the crew member being hoisted. His job is to monitor the operation and assist if necessary. Next, the person operating the hoist and the person to be hoisted put on their two-way radio sets. The radio sets allow them to stay in contact with each other at all times. If the radio fails, the standby person can relay signals. Also vital to the job is the riding belt and its attachment to the hoist line. Inspect it thoroughly before donning it. Then put on the belt and check to make sure it's properly fastened. This rig has a special grease hose and gun for greasing the traveling block and top drive components. The hose runs to a large container of grease. This setup eliminates the need for a conventional grease gun the crew member gets the grease hose and gun and securely fastens the gun to the riding belt. He does not carry it in his hand. It's easy to drop 
and the gun could injure someone who happened to be under it. Using the two-way radio system, the person in the riding belt tells the hoist operator that he's ready to be lifted. The hoist operator keeps the person in the riding belt in sight at all times. The person in the riding belt then greases the block at every grease point. In fact, he greases all points in the system according to the manufacturer's specifications. Hook, traveling block, and top drive. As he does it, he makes sure the grease actually enters the fitting. If it doesn't, he cleans the fitting or replaces it if needed. Finally, he makes a visual inspection of all the equipment and looks for obvious damage or wear. If he finds anything unusual, he reports it to the driller. The top drive has an oil reservoir. The crew member checks the reservoir's sight glass to ensure that the oil level is correct. With all the traveling components and top drive greased and checked, the crew member descends to the rig floor. After taking off his hoisting gear, he checks in with the driller. With the work complete and everyone accounted for, the driller removes the tags and powers up. The driller also unlocks the drawworks brake. And a crew member removes the pin from the drawworks power switch and turns the power back on. It wasn't all that long ago that almost every rig used a rotary table and Kelly to rotate the drill stem and bit. Today, things are reversed. That is, almost every rig now uses a top drive. But even with a top drive, or power swivel as they're sometimes called, you still need a rotary table to set slips around the drill stem to suspend the drill string when the blocks and hook assembly isn't needed. So let's take a closer look. The rotary table is an assembly of machinery inside a rugged steel base and cover. Here you can see the top of the turntable, which gears inside the base rotate if needed. You can also see the master bushing, which is where you set the slips. Daily maintenance of the rotary table is easy. Here's what you do. The first thing is the pre-job meeting. Discuss the tasks and how you're going to use them. Then the driller turns off power to the rotary table. Thoroughly wash the rotary table assembly. Get the dirt and mud off. You don't want it to contaminate the rotary's lubricants. The internal gears run in an oil bath. Open and remove the dipstick from the table case and check its level. Here it looks okay. If necessary though, top it off with the recommended oil. If the oil looks contaminated, report it to the driller. Here's what contaminated oil looks like. It's sort of light colored and could be frothy. This device locks the rotary table. Check it to make sure it is working properly. If it isn't, tell the driller. When maintenance is complete, the driller restores power to the rotary and it's set to go. As we said at the beginning, a rig requires basic pieces of equipment. We saw the crown block, the traveling block and top drive, and the rotary table. And we saw that maintenance and inspection of them is not difficult. But we also saw it is essential, for if we don't take care of the equipment, it will surely fail.